Now that time frame, if you look at a, of when you're going to be able to get your big fish, drop shotting, jigging, shallow, and that's not just this time, and we got other techniques we'll talk about, but from about the end of May through about the first week of July is when you're going to be able to get up there in that shallow water and catch those fish. Now, in the fall time, what will happen, guys? You'll go out and they just won't be there anymore. You just won't see them. They won't be on your spot. You'll know, okay, they've, they've moved. Well, remember we have to think about our water layers again. We've got to think about our thermoclines. Around that time, we're developing a pretty good thermocline, right? Remember what we talked about? So we're getting towards, you know, first week of July. We're starting to develop that. The pikemen have come in. They've done their thing. Now those fish go out. And those fish are out there, and typically what happens is, is the lakers will live below the thermocline in the summer like that. They ne don't necessarily, the big boys won't necessarily be right on the bottom. Because what happens, remember, it all goes back to understanding how your water level, how your, your uh, water stratifies. We've got our surface. We've got our thermocline section here, and then we've got our bottom layer. The main forage for those guys in there we've established is the pike minnow. Now, you won't see all those pike minnow up against the shoreline. They may come in and feed in the morning. They're going to come out and they're going to live out here in the thermocline, typically just above it. Now, pre slake thermocline, 35, 40 feet, some say 50 feet, right in there. Now, what happens if you go out and try to jig in that, that water? Those fish are suspended up in here. They're feeding suspended. Now the Ponderay guys are better Laker fishermen than the Priest Lake guys because a lot of that lake is 1,500 feet deep, 800 feet deep. Those fish are suspended out there. And the trollers always pick fish up there. Well, it's the same thing that happens here. We just got so stuck on jigging that we don't break away from it. So from the end of May through about the first week in July, we're drop shotting. We're looking at the islands. We're looking at any extended points out into the lake. Be it, same thing happened at Ponderé, which there's probably nothing left up there now. But same principle up there. Any of these lakes in this area, Flathead Lake, any of those, it's the same principle, guys. Same principle. Now what happens, our service temperature's warming up, we've got our thermocline, our pike minnow have moved off, and they're sitting out here in this open water, and they're down in that thermocline. The Lakers will come up and feed into this, and then they go back down. Because look at it kind of like yourself. The wife brings you a big old meal, you eat it, you're happy, and you retreat down to your cool basement, turn the TV on, kick your feet up on a chair, and you relax. The digestion occurs down here. The feeding occurs up here. This is where the food's at. So the biggest problem that happens is you got to get out here and it's going to be one of those, once again, if you want to go for the big fish, it's a totally different approach. You're going to get out, set your graph up, you're going to zoom it in, you're going to set your sensitivity, sensitivity up, you're going to try to find this through the particles in it, the thermocline, and you're going to start looking for those big arches. Then you're going to run flatfish, J plugs, I like plugs for the big ones, big plugs, those swim baits. Something big down there. And you're going to start trolling that thing. Now, if I know that my shelf, and you don't have to really venture too far, guys. All the shows that you've seen us do lake trout fishing, they're in the same spot. I can take you up there any time of the year, and all we do is just move a little bit. Is there a <laughs> yeah. I'll get you on a list. It's about 1,500 long nationwide. <laughs> okay, guys, what, what you have to look at is if we have, say, we, say we're working a big extended point, like so, and this point's running way out in here. And we started out, we were up in here, and we're drop shotting these fish up here. Pinto Point, thing runs out a country mile, right out from Indian Creek. Yeah. Pinto Point, runs out a mile, long, tapered. 
you'll find those fish up here during that time. Okay? And then what happens, this is, this is about, you're going to get the big ones up in here through about that first week in July. Drop shot now. We're just talking drop shot. What happens is people go, oh, man, and I got this huge lake out here. They just start, oh, I'm just going to work. So I said I got to get out here. They were living here, right? The thermal climb's set up, and it's making them move. They're not just taking off and going for a jaunt down through the lake. You don't need to leave the area where they were already at. Just like the triangle, if you stay within that working area, they're going to be there. There's no need to get crazy going all over the place. All you'll do is come out and say, okay, I, need, I know that thermal climb's down, say, 45 feet. I'm seeing some marks in there. And you just start trolling in this basic area. Maybe you troll this way. Maybe you troll this way. There's no need to get all crazy and just start heading out across the lake aimlessly. 90% of the fish are held in 10% of the water. I hit them here, shallow, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to stay here. So later when the, when the thermal climb really sets up and then you're into that July, you're going to be, time, you can just move out. You're just moving out from you're where you, out from where you well, that ridge runs across from Pinto on the east shore. There is a, up on a little bank, there's a, about a 125 foot ponderosa. First branch is about 60 feet. That's way too dialed in for me. Prentice, <laughs> Prentice and Brookshire both used to parallel the shore from eight mile up and make a 90 degree turn and lined up on that tree over to Pinto. That's where they caught the majority of their big fish. It's because they got a place to come up and feed shallow on the pike metal. They don't have, guys, just trolling aimlessly, man. Don't ever just go out. I don't care if you're bass trout. Don't ever just start aimlessly fishing. Think about it. Think about the things we've taught. Put it together. So now we're just working here. We're working right off where they were at. The big key becomes, okay, how fast do they want to? Remember, nothing's at 2.2 miles an hour for 15 hours. Our speed is up and down. We're working our speed. We're watching our graph. We're trying to see the arches down in that thermal climb. Now what you're going to see when this type of thing starts to happen, and the same thing happens with the salmon over on the ocean, especially the Chinook. Well, we started out fishing, we had them at 15 and, and 45 feet, and we caught a couple fish. And then the bite just quit. Guys, on a sunny day, if the ocean's not heavy, you drop that ball down 90 to 100 feet. Because our eyes are sensitive, let's get back down. So what you're going to do is you're not, you're not going to go out, and if you get one fish at 35 feet, Great. Keep it there for a little while longer. And if it quits, start moving your graph down. And all of a sudden, you'll see those arches now are a little bit lower than they were before. The sunlight's going to drive them back down until they get all the way down to the bottom where they're resting at, digesting their food, getting ready for the evening run. Kenny, anything, you know, the, the thing up there for years, I had a buddy of mine that lived up there. They had a place in Coolin. And all he would troll <clears throat> was a frog-colored quick fish, K-15 jointed. And he caught lots of big fish trolling. Excuse me, not as many as you get drop shotting, but he caught a lot of big fish trolling. It's all, for me, it's all plugs. We've gone up there and taken a zero-aught dodger and put a hook on it and caught him. That's a big spoon. I've seen an episode of The Fisherman. They took, what's that? Yeah, crocodiles. Crocodile, that, that thing came from years ago, guys, where the crocodile thing got started up there, gold with the orange stripe, was that back in Coolin, and the old boys are the ones that figured this out, back in Coolin, you know, it's kind of a weedy flat back in there, shallow, long shallow bay, because outlet's right there where the outlet goes out, off to the, be on the west side. A friend of ours, his, his dad's passed now, but he was in his 80s, I remember him talking to me about it, and he had a 49-pounder on his wall. And they'd go out on those breaks where you'd see the, you'd see the contour changing because it's so, lake, it's so clear where the dark water's at. They'd go out in the spring of the year and they'd just troll around that whole outlet bay right on those drop-offs. And that's how they caught all their big fish using a crocodile. Even back then, those fish were coming up there shallow. But why do you think in the spring of the year, guys, a lake trout can come up shallow like that? What happens to the lake? Yeah, your turnovers and stuff, right? That's the whole key. Here's what happens. Chad, in February, how well do you do up there jigging and drop shotting for lake trout? Not very good. 
Not very good. From October through to about the end of January, you're going to be jigging. What happens is the fish come in in the fall, usually around the end of October, November, and they, they're doing their spawn. Their preferred spawn is about 30 feet of water. It's on softball sized rock, and they just come in. It's a big group orgy, which is a broadcast spawn. They come in, big masses of them, and they dump, and then they leave. That's about the end of October through November. We've caught fish in December that still had eggs in them. Once again, it all depends on how cold it got, how fast, how the water, if it dropped, all those environmental things. But what you'll see when you come in is you'll see those fish all stacked up in the fall like that. Then what happens, and we're going to get in a little more detail about that, and then what happens, guys, usually around the middle to the end of January, they can't be found anymore. Well, the cool water's settled. Just like in the summertime, they're out there using all that open water. But they're not great distances away from where they once were. Where Chad likes to go catch them at, where he fishes, just down the block from where he fishes at, there's an underwater hump that comes up to about 28 feet. You ever run across that, Chad? Right between Cowspell and Beartoe Island. Yep, Chad's jigging has always been done in deep water. He hasn't got the experience of the shallow water stuff yet. And he's caught, they've caught big fish out there. You're saying jigging in, 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 no, no, no. Where no, what, what, what I'm saying is relative, relative to where, once again, not moving great distances. Where he fishes, there's a big old hole out there. Down the block from that hole, there's a big old shallow area like that. I've caught, in July, end of June, big fish right up here doing it. The ones that Chad have caught are the ones typically resting, but I've caught them up here shallow. So you don't have to travel great distances from where this is, okay? Keeping that in mind. So here's, here's what we're talking about. Chad, are you, Kenny, are you making fun of me? You saying I'm lazy? No, no. He's just a big lumbering guy. Looks like he's got crap in his pants. Well, that's my understanding. No, they're they're not they're not a big like a like a cam or something like that. Definitely a little more lazy, a little more Seth esque, if we'll call it that. <laughs> Beautiful in my own way. They are aggressive. They're they're aggressive. Okay, but here's, here's the thing. 